Today's lesson is going to take us to the Wild West. We're going to explore color with Frederick Remington and reevaluate metamorism. Oh, that guy, he's still back there. He's still angry at me. We'll see if I survive this at the end. Well, I told you we'd be back to metamorism. It's the phenomenon that occurs when colors change when viewed in different light sources. If you look at both of these pictures, the one on the left and the one on the right, they have the same objects inside of them. But what's changed? The atmosphere. And the atmosphere makes the one image look warmer than the other one. That's an effect of metamorism. This is photographer Robert Weingarten, who's made a career out of documenting metamorism with his camera. For an entire year on the Santa Monica Bay, he would go out and photograph the exact same location at the, at the exact same time, 6.30 in the morning. This happens to be November 24th. So from January 1st to December 31st, he photographed the exact same thing. And I know a lot of you are thinking, boring! Why would you take a photo of the exact same location, the exact same time of day, every day for a year? Aren't you going to get the same thing? Absolutely not, because of metamorism. This photo that you're looking at right now is the exact same location at the exact same time. But what has changed? Well, it's February now instead of November. And maybe the weather's different. So the time of day isn't any different, right? The location isn't any different, but the temperature has changed and it affects everything in the atmosphere. Again, same location, same time of day, different time of year. Look at the photo, looks completely different. Yes, even with this beam of light coming down, this is the exact same place, the exact same location, at the exact same time, every time during this whole year, 6.30 a.m. Remember, we're looking for three things, temperature, mood, and time of day to affect the atmosphere. We talked about this in the last presentation, and metamorism is how that color affects everything inside. And no, this is not Mr. Farrell playing mind tricks on you again. Same place, same time. A master of understanding metamorism, or just color in general, was a guy named Frederick Sackrider Remington. Yeah, you can't make up that middle name. He was a masterful colorist. Look at his paintings of the Wild West. He was a magnificent sculptor and an editorial illustrator for Hearst Publications, one of the most famous newspapers of its day. Though a Yale graduate, he was very famous for documenting how we understand life to be in the Wild West. So think of your favorite video games or movies and how much they were inspired actually by Remington's paintings. His paintings are seen as a historical documentation of what life really was like. Even though some of those cartoons have been called a question of their historical accuracy, his paintings are known for not only being accurate in story, but also, most importantly, why we're studying it now, color. I remember when I first learned about branding. You're burning an animal's flesh to mark your name on there. That sounded cruel to me. But then when I looked at his paintings, I found out the reason why is you could have whole battles because people fighting over cattle. And the reason why is cattle meant life or death, the ability to feed your family. Considering those stakes, I have to consider how cruel that really actually was. I mean, that was a life or death moment. Consider this image. This image is called Lasso Duel to the Death. I mean, the Wild West was really wild. I'd also look at Remington's command of drawing horse anatomy. It's amazing. I would compare and contrast to an artist that we looked at earlier this year, Leonardo da Vinci's The Battle of Angari. And so while he had a command of understanding the cowboy life, the Wild West, and horses, the real reason we're looking at Remington right now, though, is his command of color. Look at his nighttime colors. For example, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, ugh, to go get that glass of water, you'll be able to see. But what you'll notice is that even though you're looking around the room, because there's not as much light, the metamorism has changed. So everything actually loses all of its color. Everything becomes monochromatic at night. That's why this painting is so brilliant. He's one of the first artists to really figure out how to paint at night. Another key factor to understand or learn from Remington is that he experimented with color. Look, the values are the same in both of these paintings. It's basically the same drawing, repeated, but he's experimenting with color in each one. 
get a better understanding of how best to use color. And remember why we studied complementary colors. Here he's brilliantly using those oranges against the blues, and it just feels right. This might be my favorite Remington painting ever. You've got the dramatic lightning in the background. You've got the rainstorm, the, the incredible gesture of the horse breathing heavily as it's, it's galloping through the field. You've got this giant stampede of all these cows running for their lives. It's a powerful painting. And you can see how the atmosphere is causing the cows to kind of disappear in the background. Every note dramatically is hit here. This is a home run for Remington. And again, I want to revisit how powerful his nighttime paintings are. How important is value in these? Like if you look at the painting on the right, he's drawing the value shapes in there, big shapes. And then he's gradually getting to the rest of the form. Like if you squint your eyes, you could see the big shapes that he's blocked in. Look at the, the image on the left. Again, squint your eyes, look at the big shapes that he's blocked in as contours, and then how he's connected them. Remember when we build drawings through value, we think of like puzzle pieces. I want you to squint your eyes and see the different pieces he's put together. And then it doesn't look so complex. But then when you back off and you unsquint your eyes, you see all the beautiful complexities of the image. So you need to simplify it for yourself so that your images, when they come out at the very end, then all the complexities come out. But simplify it for yourself. Build it in little pieces. Put the pieces together and think in value. Then there's this image. When I saw this in the gallery, I swear to you, it almost knocked the wind out of me. I apologize that the image quality that I have here doesn't do this image justice. This is one of the most beautiful paintings I had ever seen in my life far as color. This slide doesn't even remotely come near that. But you can see the beautiful play of value. It's almost like a yin yang symbol. You can see the brightest bright is against the darkest dark and some there's a dark in the light. You see that? This painting is brilliant. And it comes from observation, looking at the, this type of dusk sky to get the colors just right. You're probably wondering, what does Remington have to do with these military photos? Well, this is none other than the Rough Riders, run by the president of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt. Well, he wasn't president then, but this is what would help him get elected. You see, Remington was supposed to be documenting the Spanish-American War and the invasion of the United States into Cuba. This is the Battle of San Juan Hill. But that glorious charge up San Juan Hill, Remington was never there. In fact, he hung out with his best friend, Teddy Roosevelt, mostly when he was in Florida. And while he was in Florida, he helped name the Florida cowboy, the Cracker. Remington compared the Florida cowboy to the sorriest cowboys he had ever seen. And the Cracker part came from the way that the whips cracked in the air. Now, if you see those cowboys on the far right, they're hiding behind palmetto bushes, which probably isn't a good idea because rattlesnakes like to live in them. So thank you for journeying with me to see Frederick Remington. And if you look, that guy's no longer here. I guess I showed him who the wildest in the West truly was. Till next lesson. Hope you guys are doing well. This is Farrell. I'm Farrell, and this has been a Brain River High School art production.